Hey guys, it's Doc from the Gold Hog, and uh, today we're out here. We're going to be running the five-inch dredge, which you might hear in the background, anyways. But uh, what we're going to do is, uh, a few weeks ago, we were out here and we were running the Monster Hog, and that Monster Hog test went really well. We were doing um, a refined testing catch on it, and uh, did really well. Then we came out here and we ran the Mini. We ran the Mini, and we ran the Mini with the extension, both. And that test went really well. Then the next week we came out and we ran the gold hog. We ran it on a capture percentage test. It did really well. We even ran it as a dredge. That went really well. So now we're out here with the five inch. And this is a custom built uh, project that I let the guys do once a year, kind of Home Depot stuff. But I'm gonna show you mat configurations. I'm gonna show you different stuff. Um, but I'm also gonna give you a couple tips as well. Okay, so one of the first tips I'm going to give you is uh, this is a uh, this is a cold weather undershirt that you can get, and now is a good time of the year to find them on clearance. You can go to Walmart, you can go to any of those stores, and you can find these cold weather gear shirts that you can wear under your suit. And it's nice because it just puts keeps that chafing down under your suits, under your under your wetsuits. Um, I, I typically will wear this, and sometimes I even go if it's really cold. Um, I'll buy one of those little surf suits and it's sort of a three-quarter like two mil surf suit that fits me real tight and I'll wear that and it keeps all the water away from my skin and then I put my regular wetsuit on top of that. Um, the only thing is it does add a little bit of flotation to you so if you might have to add a little bit more weight but um, it's, a, it's a good it's a it's a real nice what you're trying to do with a wetsuit, of course, is you're trying to keep a wetsuit fitting pretty tight because you don't want the exchange of water. It's not the fact that your suit is wet, it's when water exchanges. When you have that cold water up against your skin, you're trying to keep a layer of warm water or, or that wetsuit right next to your skin, and that's the key to it. When you wear a wetsuit, you want them to fit pretty tight. Hey guys, before we uh, before we start running this five inch dredge, I'm going to walk you over and I'm going to show you the mat configuration. We're we're playing with a bunch of different things, but this is a good example of um, taking advantage of a longer sluice and exposing your material to very surfaces, various surfaces, and very exchanges. Um, but I'll I'll walk you over there and shoot this mat config for you. And you'll have to excuse me because this camera lens keeps fogging up, so I'm going to have to keep wiping it. But hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, so what I've got on this um, system is, is I've got a big dampener mat here and because this dampener mat's heavy and puts a lot of pressure on I don't want a lot of big riffles in here so I've got razorback mat sitting under this that allows the rocks to flow through but you'll notice that as soon as that dampener mat stops and everything gets released I'm hitting it with a full river hog let me go under that so the way I've got this set up is, is I go razor back, then I have a full river hog, then I have about a three quarter river hog, and then I have a real small river hog. And then after that, I'm going to a series of scrubber mats. After the scrubber, I'm gonna to go to bedrock, and then I'm going to UR at the very end. So um, this, is, this is more of a system where what we're doing is, is we're hitting it with a big flow interruption of the river hog up, up top. We're going to a semi-flow interruption, more of a processing with the scrubber. Then we're gonna go down to the fine processing of the bedrock and the UR. And of course, I can do this because I've got a big long sluice here. Um, but this is a good configuration for whether it's a high banker or a dredge. If you have a smaller unit, I would recommend mainly using scrubber in it. It's a great processor. If you can fit a little bit of river hog, if you've got a small dredge, then do it. But you know, you're going to have to play with the river hog and cut it and trim it to what you want. Um, you will see, because this is a big flow interruption, you're going to see larger gravels behind here. You're going to deal with issues of mass versus specific density. And the lower this goes, the less you'll deal with that. But then when you get down to like the scrubber mat and the bedrock and the UR, you really don't have that flow interruption or, or a lot of mass issues. So I'll show you this when it's running and we'll take a look at some of the gold. Hey guys, before I walk over there and get in the motor, what I want you to see is this new mat configuration we're running. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the flow interruption at the top with a river hog, then it goes to a scrubber, then it goes to a bedrock, then it goes to UR. 
but this allows all those massive boulders and you're going to see what comes through this five inch you're going to be able to see it and how we process it we go for larger gold to medium gold to smaller gold now, david's down here and he's so deep you can just see his bubbles this bedrock is probably about eight feet underwater that we're having to bust through with this five inch coming down here that's what I'm talking about these big rocks are coming through but you can see I mean look at these are rocks that have come through here these things are massive I've been putting them. that stupid rock came through our dredge look how flat that is that is just massive but you can see what happens I've got a flow interruption up here So I'm going to show you this mat. Um, I've, I've showed you this running, and I'm going to show you more of it running. The amount of material that we got going through, and these huge boulders that we got coming through this stuff. We just did a shutdown. I want to show you what the mat looks like. So here, you can see that this is UR mat, and I'm trying to get it so you can actually see it without sunshine. But this is what the UR mat looks like. There's barely there's black sand. Here's the bedrock. You can see that there's black sand and material in there. Here is, there's the scrubber. And you can see what the scrubber looks like. I'm going to walk up and show you some of the river hog. So, again, you got flow interruption. You got flow interruption right in here in your river hog, and you're going to see larger rocks. And then you're going to go down to more of a processing as you go into your scrubber that's what we want to see this is this is a good run the mat looks good I've got black sand inside of it again this is this is pretty much of a tough challenge you got a five inch dredge just blowing material through um, and we're running just bare mats on this there's no metal on this at all so that's a tough challenge to do a quick clean out and I'll show you some of the gold we probably have some fine stuff we just started hitting bedrock But you can see, that's pretty decent gold for 30 minutes. It's starting to float away. <clears throat> but this is really what I want you to see. I want you to be able to see, <clears throat> we're running a five inch blasting water through there and you can see all the tiny, tiny gold in there. I'm gonna have to get it a little bit shaded here. See all that tiny stuff in there? 50s and 100s. That's the stuff I really want you to see. And we're catching some of the bigger stuff finally, so... Okay, so one of the tips that I wanted to cover today on dredging, I figured this would be a good little tip, is, is choosing your battles. And one thing that I want you to think about is uh, a good example is like on gold rush 
you saw them drilling and, and uh, a lot of times they say, well, I can only go down 20 feet. If I'm deeper than 20 feet, I can't do it. That's too much material to move. So we drill test. When we're working with commercial operations, we drill tests. And what we're doing is we're drilling down to see how far bedrock is, where, how far that pay layer is, and how much material we have to move to get to that pay layer. Well, I want you to apply the same sort of logic to dredging because you don't want to spend all day moving eight feet of material just to get down to bedrock and you and you only have a little tiny hole on your bedrock that you're working so I guess that's one thing that I'm trying to stress to these guys is how to pick your is 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 if I'm not here with them how to pick the right spots and what you want to do is is you want to try and find spots that matches your m machine and your equipment so if I have a one and a half inch or a two inch dredge, a small dredge, I'm going to look for exposed bedrock or I'm going to look for places in the creek where the bedrock is very shallow. I am not going to go and just pick a spot and just keep working down and working down and never hit bedrock. Same thing, two and a half, you might be able to go a little bit deeper, three inch, you might be able to go a little bit deeper. But even with the five inch that we're running today, I don't want to go down and I told these guys <clears throat> we hit a spot over here and it was the bedrock was probably eight feet down and I was like no we're, we're, we're moving because I'm not moving all that material to get to bedrock I can move one foot two foot three foot and get down to bedrock but I want to work bedrock as much as possible so what I want to do is, is just sort of talk about when I'm working a creek a lot of times what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find cobble areas where I can go in real quickly and move those cobbles and see where the bedrock is because a lot of times if you're finding cobbles you're going to find bedrock not too far beneath that's not always true but it's usually a good thing the other thing is the other thing is 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 how where that bedrock goes so in other words if I'm over in this creek and I hit bedrock shallow and I'm working bedrock right here and all of a sudden the bedrock drops off that's probably a good place to follow but if I don't have the equipment to move all that material I need to find a little bit flatter bedrock okay so that's one of the things we're looking for we found bedrock on the side of a creek let's say over here and it came out and then it just dropped off and went way down I'm not gonna move eight feet of material to get down to that bedrock because I'm just not gonna be able to work a lot of bedrock I'm gonna look for an area that has more flat bedrock to it. Yes, it may be two or three feet down, but I'm looking for those flat bedrock areas. And what I'm doing is, is I'm trying to match my bedrock area to my equipment. So that's key to it is, is, is you gotta test and you gotta poke holes and see how far down bedrock is. Okay, so here's what I want you to do now. I want you to take a look at this river. And what we're going to do with this river is I'm going to cut it in half. So we're going to drop and look at the bottom. Now what I want you to picture is I want you to picture where the bedrock is going to be here. And you really can't until you actually get down and dredge and figure out where it is. So let's assume that this is what it looks like. We've discovered this on this river just through testing and just through dredging. And you can see that you have the creek and water level on the bottom, sand and gravels, then it drops down to hard pack and cobbles, but you really can't tell where the bedrock ends. So we would go, I would like to start dredging on the left side of the creek, where it's two to three feet down to the bedrock. I can move that down, especially with a five inch fairly easily, and I can clean from the left over to the center. Now, if I find an area that drops off like the right side and goes down maybe eight or nine feet, I'm going to spend all day trying to get down to a little patch of bedrock and I won't have good gold recovery. So if I find that dropping off too deep, instead I'll go further down the river and follow that narrower side. Now let's look down the river or let's watch the river flow and you'll see this often. So if you're looking down a river and you see the river flowing, you're going to see areas that are shallower than other. So you'll have a deep area of the river, You'll have a shallower area, and typically on your shallow areas, you usually see a gravel bar or even exposed bedrock. And this is a good way to sort of start off and where to choose from. So if I see a gravel area that runs all the way across the creek at that high point, then I know that bedrock is more than likely high there. Now, I'm not talking about an inside bend that has gravel built up on it. I'm talking about a gravel bar that goes all the way across the creek. Then, after that gravel bar, you'll often see deep areas. 
And you'll find that if you follow this trend, that the bedrock will usually follow that creek bottom. Not always, but if you're looking across the creek and you see that line run all the way across the creek, there's a good chance that the bedrock does the same. Remember, I'm not talking about areas where we're talking about gravel bars because of inside bends or outside bends. I'm talking about areas that run across the creek. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to use maps. So let's take a look at this map. This area is actually not too far from where we've been dredging. Um, it's probably about a half mile away. But I use this as an example. On this part of the river, I went to Google Earth or Google Maps, and I can zoom in. And if you're lucky enough, you can actually see these formations. And I think you can figure out, it's pretty easy, where those exposed bedrock areas are. So if you take a look at the map, you'll see, I've put red arrows to show you, these are exposed bedrock areas. This is a great place to start, especially if you have a smaller dredge. If you find exposed bedrock, it's a no brainer. But the same thing, if you find those gravel bars that run all the way across the creek like this, this is a good place to start. Check them and see if you've got high bedrock, then you can move down as deep as your equipment can go. Now, if you have a larger dredge, now you can go to these deeper areas and these deeper pools where you might have to move two, three, four feet of overburden to get down to that bedrock. You'll have a better chance of moving that overburden and getting down to some good deeper bedrock as well too. So let's go back out and following this theory, let's find out what happened when we hit some decent bedrock. Hey guys, this is uh, this is what you call raw footage. You can hear the dredge down there running in the background, but I just came down here. We did our first real one hour run on reasonably leveled bedrock. So we're having to go down about a foot to two feet to clean bedrock. And this is what I'm talking about, about picking your battles and understanding having to move too much overburden to get to bedrock. <clears throat> so what we're able to do is we're able to get to that bedrock quickly and clean a whole bunch of bedrock because of this spot, because we're picking the right spot. And the first one hour run, that decent gold in it, I'm gonna show it to you. That's pretty. Now that's a one hour run with that five inch dredge running nothing but mats. I've got a bunch of 100s, a bunch of 50s, but I've got a couple nice pickers. Look at that nugget. So, and this isn't all of it either, because there's more back over here. Oh man, look at that wire gold. You see that wire gold? But I want you to see this. That's some nice gold there. Now that's one hour with the five inch, hitting, finding a good place to hit, reasonably depth bedrock. Uh, I'm real happy with that. So again, I've got I'm seeing a bunch of 50s, some 100s, and that tells me that if I'm catching 50s and 100s, I'm catching my bigger gold, which is showing up. When we clean the mat, we can actually see it's stuck inside the mat. We're having to really struggle to get it out and bend that mat because it's huge. It's 24 inches wide. So that's a good sign for me. Um, we're also, we also switch back to that other mat where we have the punch plate over it. We're gonna run that one again, again, just to play with different configurations and test it out because we're running we're running that dredge wide open just about. We're moving massive rocks through that thing. Um, but I'm real happy with that, so. But that's our pan right there, and there's still more gold. There's still more, there's a ton of more gold back in here. That's a nice piece right there. That's nice gold. But this is, that's all nice gold in there. I'm gonna take some pictures of that. But again, I want to stress, we finally hit a spot that we can get to bedrock quickly and stay on bedrock and clean bedrock and clean bedrock and clean bedrock. These other spots we've been going to the past couple days, the bedrock's way down, it's like eight feet down, and we may get down to the bottom of the hole and only be able to clean a little 12, 24 inch piece of bedrock, and that's just the wrong way to go to it. I want to get to the pay level, and that's what you need to do with your dredge. You need to find exposed bedrock that you can work easily if you have a smaller dredge, then as you go with a bigger dredge, you can go to different areas and move a little more. 